Okay, I'm making this video because I just did a coaching session with uh, somebody named K-Cube who's been around for a very, very long time. And I had the complete file. Just it, it, it It's a thing where if you don't have enough disk space on your, on your stuff, it's going to just self-destruct on you. So that's exactly what happened. So what I'm going to do is instead I'm deleting all this stuff and I'm going to do a really quick synopsis of basically everything that happened just so he has something. But also I feel like it'd be better if I had the synopsis in a way because it allows um it allows me to like quickly condense all the information where before you had to watch an hour video you could just do you know i actually really like this song dude i i find it so i struggle so much with trying to get away from rocket league because so much of my music taste has actually evolved because of rocket league you know like literally since 2015 since 2015 i've been playing this game i can't get away from it i really can't there's no matter what i do it's just a part of my life now that's one of the reasons, like, it's just EDM. I got into EDM because of this game. I thought I'd never do it because I was a I was a big rock head, you know? I was a big rock head. I'm like, I'm never going to listen to EDM. And then I ended up listening to EDM through it, you know, through um, Pegboard Nerds. That was the first thing. Through the montages of uh, um, Kronovi and um, Tristam. And then that was my segue. And then eventually it just evolved into now just listening to piano music. Anyway, uh, let's, um, I'm going to immediately get into this. So I accidentally did a game before, but I want to highlight this rotation here. So you're going to watch me and a lot of my stuff's the same. So you can see how I'm slowly, like I'm second man here. I'm second to Dustin or D Dustpan and I'm waiting like the way I don't cross the midline because I'm looking, I'm on the half turn. I'm on the half turn. I'm not fully committed facing forward on the field, but I'm not fully backward. I'm on the half turn. I can either, I can do either or. And that's one of the big proponents of this whole uh, rotation. Yeah, so watch this. Watch how this play develops. So, my teammate goes. I'm going to rotate out. But now I'm looking. As soon as I grab this boost, I'm like looking, 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 looking. And then right here I go. Okay? Now I want you to see what my student was doing. And look at this now. Look at my angle. Look at, look at how I'm rocking this play. So he was confused because he was like, what do I do in this position? Like, I feel like I want to go, but I also feel like you're in your recovery. So I, I don't know what to do. And I'm in this weird phase where I'm like, not sure. And I would say in this position right here, it's not clear in general whether or not to dive. Like, you still don't know, you know, like you don't know whether to dive or not, you know, like because you don't know how the play is going to develop. And I would say, like, if you're in a 1v1, you never really tackle in their corners, right? Because it doesn't do anything even if you do win the tackle, you know? I mean, you'll just displace him, but I mean, you'll win possession maybe. But more often than not, I mean, they could just bait the tackle. You're gonna overcommit, or it just bounces off their fucking wall and it goes forward, and then you're then you just get scored on. So it's kind of the same thing when you're dealing with doubles, you know. And that right here, you don't want to really go for it anyway, you know. Like you don't want to, um, because it's not gonna win anything. It's in their corner. There's no angle to the goal. You don't have an angle. It's not like you're shooting here and he's covering it. I mean, your angle is is literally faced into the corner. So it's like, th there's no point in going for it. But I said, you don't really only want to tackle when I'm square to you. You know, like if I'm in front, then I'm still in recovery, then you don't want to tackle. But as soon as I enter square, so I'm horizontal to him, then it's okay because then I can just easily pivot behind him. You know, that's what I told him. And so just compare that initial clip that I had with this one. You know, and like I'm saying to Kay, I'm like, yo, you you could you could tackle this, bro. Like right here, like if you see that he's awkward, you can either fake it or tackle. But the thing is, is that you a lot of the time you can notice the mistake. He's too far to the right, so he should be when instead his approach was a fine. But then he should be like right here and looking, looking, looking. And it also hides him in his frame because look at Toasty, look at Toasty's frame here. You know, like he's hardly gonna see Kay right around here like right here he's gaining possession and this is where the opportunity in the window is to tackle right here now he can the defender can recover but before if you know like he could already be on the tackle right here and looking to dispossess him go up the wall and then maybe doomsy it or just try to shoot or do something you know but now even then even then if you don't want to even even then if you don't do it you could still at least be right here and you'll be shadowing so you'll be facing this way 
and you'll be working, working, looking, looking, looking like that. But instead, he goes a little bit too far. The tackle is backwards. You know, it, I don't know how he won that tackle, but he shouldn't. You know, so that's all. So how should it have been versus what actually happened? You know, and I'm looking the whole time while I'm rotating out. I grab that pad and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm waiting, 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 waiting. Looking at my cut in right here. Boom, boom, boom. And then it just goes here. And then I thought he was going to tackle me. So I did early thing. Okay, what was the next thing? The next point that I really wanted to bring up was why is there ELO inflation? Why is there rank disparity? And I really want to illustrate something that is fucking so profound. And I don't want to spend two hours sitting here scrubbing through all this footage again um, just to go back and, and to tell you um, you can't mount an offense on the breakout. So, like, if you have... I'm going to go back to paint, and I'm sitting here trying to recover that data, but I can't, you know, because Wondershare, everything wants me to pay. So, you know, that was, there goes that. If anyone, by the way, has any fucking method of recovering data where you don't have to pay for it, please let me know. But I, I ran out of options. So, um, a lot of the times you're going to notice, especially in twos and threes, twos and threes alike. And I, I spent the session to go to do twos only because... I mean, it's the same shit, whether or not it's twos and threes. But a lot of players, what they like to do is when they're second man, they like to push up because on this clear, they feel like they need to be there. Okay? They feel like they need to be there and, and, and land this, like, crazy double. It never, ever works. If your first man is looking to clear, the second man thinks he needs to catch up to the ball and try to beat this fucking defender who's going on. It doesn't work. It never works. And I want to show you a clip where a guy tried to do this to me, and this was happening all session. And then I want to immediately segue that into talk about why there is rank disparity or why there's elo hell, why it exists. And it's basically having to deal with the clash. And it, and it was in the moment, it was fucking awesome. I would have loved to have had this clip and showed shown this to you in the moment. But I, but I, you know, when I basically just found this out, it was fucking like, dude, I was like shocked at what I was saying. And, and KQ was like, yo, like, what are you saying, dog? You know? Um, and so this is what happened. So I'm the first man. I'm now recovering. What do I do? Okay, well, I need to let Dustpan go. To me, Dustpan needs to go first, but I'm waiting. So I'm looking. I grab my boost. I now have boost. I can now look to start making my cut in, my run in. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Look how far back in the play I am, dude. I have all the time in the world. I have all the space. Whatever. Let them do their thing. Now what happens? Look at Fat Trill. The, he's the second man. He should be letting Squawky give this ball to me, letting Squawky recover, and Fat Trill plays in such a way where he now shadows me. And tries to force it into the corner. Okay. <clears throat> You're like, what's the difference between that and a 1v1? Well, there's really no difference other than the fact that the position has now led me into such a spot where Fat Trill, if he plays it correctly, it'll be really difficult for me to score because he can just throw it into the corner. You know, that's the only difference. On a 1v1, I have like all the space I can work with. In difference, in now in twos, the play is developed where I'm kind of on a time frame where Squawky, if he recovers, can demo me or f recover in such a way where the 1v1 is now gone and it's a 1v2, you know? So um, I'm on a time limit. Notice that second man goes. You know, I'm watching this guy and I'm just I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm in Madden where you got like the hit stick and you go like, you know, we're like, you know, you're carrying the ball and you just go down on the hip stick and, and somebody just slides right past you. That's basically the same shit. You know, I'm like a matador. I'm like, you know, raving a red flag at a bull. You know, that's all that's happening. And the second man really thinks that for some reason they need to mount an offense and go for this. I don't know why people do this when Squawky is making a clear. But instead he thinks he needs to beat it as if I'm not there. And they end up losing a scoring over this. This happened, and I want you to trust me when I say this, this happened literally all session. All session, it was just people doing this second man trying to push forward. And KQ was getting a little stuck on this, and he kept trying to do this as well. And this is what led me into the base, into, into figuring out, while I was talking about it, about the whole idea of ELO inflation, which is essentially this. Your second man keeps thinking, and noticing him and the way that he plays as a champ player... He keeps thinking that whenever he rotates in, I was like, yo, you got to spread out when you went on your recovery. Because he kept doing this shit where he like rotates in like this. Then he's backwards to the ball. And then he's this way. Here's the clip. I'm going to show you. Here's what I found. Finally, after like 10 minutes of searching, here it is. This is what happens. So watch him. Example one. Okay. Okay. 
okay i had somebody tell me when i was making the script and i and i like released it and i let everybody look i'm like you you can pause the video and watch this read it if you want the script for that professional's guide to rotations video and it's very there's little bits that are going to change but it's the, the structure the skeleton is basically there and i had somebody say yeah i could follow with the script and it's stuff i already do no you don't okay here's the low in this is why i dedicated one bit to the low elo mistakes because this is one of the low elo mistakes this is what people do they rotate too far in now the back is to the ball and now look me being your champ teammate right now so i'm fucking i'm i'm a, i spent a year off i shouldn't be diving at this i i'm like pissed at myself but i should not be but most of your teammates will be so confused that they're going to do exactly what i did despite me playing the game for six years okay they're going to fucking do what i did they're going to be like what the hell's happening they're going to go for it they're going to be confused and then you're going to get scored on like this you are probably 100 percent making this mistake i guarantee you my most of my viewers are plats champs and low gc's okay and even then sometimes you do a little bit even the high gc's will do a little iteration of this there's only like two people that i've coached um that do kind of an iteration of this but they do get caught in this a little bit okay and you can see it at all levels basically so what he's developed what he's developed is that because people like to think that they need to mount an offense and their second man needs to play so fucking far up so as to say that the probability of this guy winning the tackle and it dropping a 50 and he's going to somehow beat them despite the defense being there anyway because they naturally keep things tight that that 10% chance it is better for him to do that than to have the fucking 90% chance that the ball is going to spit out in the sideline he can look to throw it made or shoot and put them in an overload okay i've explained this in many videos before so they think that that 10% probability of them dropping and them being there is way better than them just doing the simple play in other words okay and overloading the defender i need to slow down right that's right i need to slow down a little bit okay what's happened is is as a result a lot of second man dive needlessly they dive so what the third man has developed and his rotation is he does does what's called the oh shit rotation and i have to like every session every student i have to coach it out of them if you are before a coaching session i should make this a prerequisite before you fucking get a session with me you need to watch this video because because this is what everybody does and then they're too far in, they're backwards to the ball, then they're airling backwards where they should have been wide enough in the first place to go for it. So how does this, how does this relate to ELO inflation? Because what everybody has developed now and what happened with me is that everybody thinks and they develop the oh shit rotation and then they're backwards and then where they go for this, then they double commit. Okay, and so every because every person does this and their second man has developed the oh shit rotation that you now in the higher ranks people start to realize that the second man they can start moving sidelines. So as a result, when you get higher in rank, you start to develop the habit now and relearn that basically you don't need to do the oh shit rotation anymore. And instead, you could actually rotate normally as you should because your teammates are actually playing the position as they normally would. And so now you get out of that that weird habit and you instead develop a new habit of the right way so now you have this weird bubble and 1600 1700 of players who are now getting out of that habit of rotating too far in and then being backwards and then players who are now developing the new habit of of actually rotating correctly and so this is what leads to elo hell this is why you have rank disparity it's because of this fucking thing and it's because people it's the difference between People playing it correctly, where the second man is on the sideline, he's midfield, and look at sideline, playing the zone correctly, versus him just diving needlessly. That is why the bubble is there. This is why rank disparity exists. That is a big concept that basically I wanted to highlight for this. And I can fucking see it, because he starts to do that thing where he rotates too far in. He rotates too far in, and then it leads into this. Now he's backwards to the play. Instead of doing what I talked about before. You know, where I showed in the beginning clip, the very beginning clip, I was like, yo, when you land, you know, you're very much like you grab your boost, you grab your 48 boost. If you don't get the full, you're going to rotate on the lifeline pads, the lifeline pads being these pads. So you're going to get about four or five pads, which is going to land you about 48, 60 boost, which is plenty. That's all you need. You only need like 50 to get uh, like a high 50 in order to get to the roof. So you get 50 boost and then oh, it's all you need. And then you could just coast and wait, wait, wait. And now you're up for it. Like K Cube, K Cube would already be up for this at the same time that Juice would already be making the decision to go up for it. Like when? What's the timing? He's here. He's looking, looking, looking. 
boom now he's up with him matching him mirroring him perfectly but instead he's not he's doing this and why does that develop well i just explained it it develops because of the reason that your second man likes to dive so you do this and then it manifests into this and it does that and the next thing you know we get scored on because of this your double commits happen this is why you want to know why you can't get out of champ this is why you can't get out of champ has anyone fucking told you this does spook luke talk about this does verge talk about this does any fucking genuine coach out there who's out there talk about this they do fucking not nobody talks about this but me okay so i would invite all of you coaches if you watch this shit bite my shit please get the fucking information out there at least do something if you're gonna fucking just spew bullshit you may as well just steal my shit at that point just fucking steal it i don't even care at this point just at least and you know what give me credit that'd be great but fucking steal it so that's the big thing so he's developed a weird recovery habit that i was working with him the whole time a weird recovery habit where he was rotating and doing the oh shit rotation which led him into all the time when he was doing this even on defense recovering on our half so rather than you know so like if instead of it being on this half you know the that example i just showed you with him doing this here and him be doing all this weird aerial he would do this but it would manifest in such a way where now on defense if we were the ball were in our half it was so strange that a lot of the times he would just be in a weird spot and i kept having to tell him on his recovery he needs to assess the position so essentially he needs to see a or b okay an equal position will have it that you can normally rotate out a disadvantageous position will have it that somebody's beat and you need to cover for it so you need to basically cut in a little bit so i told him what you need to do what you need to do and i was good practice for that session because i was very rusty and i'm making a lot of mistakes so that basically gave him ample opportunity and said you need to work on this particular thing which is you need to assess a or b is a is it advantageous yes okay i can i advantageous would be you can you can cut in a little bit more equal equal position so advantageous equals cut in your spacing is going to be a little bit closer that's it you know so normally where you check into the communism pad line right here where did the three boost pads that are sitting right here normally where you do that instead you could cut it cut into the midfield or you could be right here if it's advantageous that's if somebody is out of the play on their team if it's like a 2v3 that's very obvious that you'll be able to pick up on that if the position is equal equal equals normal okay so normal would be here communism pad line and then check deep look to cut in second if you're in threes if not then you're here and you're pretty much doing the same movement on defense on twos as well so, and they're literally literally the exact same thing um if it's disadvantageous it's not letting me like not let me erase my thing so disad if it's disadvantageous that at that point you need to say okay i can't do this anymore so i'm going to cut in mid and then look to see what we do there and so then you can either sit on this boost pad that's right here like if you're on defense and you're like right here you can see but you need to be able to 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 go cover mid if you can you need to be able to cover mid if you can that's very important so you're going to sit either here like this pointing this way you're going to be right here or you're going to be right here facing this way you're going to be looking and you're covering back post the whole time but also you're covering midfield is it the same? It's the same shit that I've been talking about at threes. Do you guys connect the dots? Do I get an oh? Yo, can I get one? Did I get an oh moment? That'd be fucking sick. Okay. If I got an oh moment, I just did my job. Okay. So you're here and you're assessing whether or not you can make your full rotation in or whether or not you need to cover front post uh, wherever their space is empty. Okay. I would prioritize front post, but depending on the play goes, if the guy is beckoning, if you're at a disadvantageous position and it looks like the guy is going to cut mid, then I would say don't go front post. You want to be in this half turn position where you could look to cut mid and then you're going to cover it. So that's how you recover really shit positions where your teammates get beat. Okay. But a lot of people don't know this and they weren't given a grounds uh, for what the position should look like because they think that the wrong way is the right way because they're exposed to it so many times. That they don't know what they don't know and then they chat with you and they tell you you're toxic when you actually call them out on hey this is wrong we need to do something different so 
ranked has a long way to go. Rocket League has a long way to go. So the big takeaway for K-Cube would be that he, is, that he needs to watch his recovery, rotate wider, trust his teammates, and if he sees them getting beat and or he knows they're getting beat, then you can look to either A, it would be then, then it's okay to cut in more, you know, at that point. So normally you would go like this wide and follow these dotted lines. But if not, and they get beat, well, then you can cut in right here on this pad or you can cut in, you know, like anywhere along this back post line. Typically that back post line is why I said it was really important. You can cut in. To cover that back post line, right? You have the midfield line right here. That's near post, sorry. This is midfield. Hold on, different color. This is midfield. Wing, 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 wing. Yeah, imagine that the midfield. That's really messed up, Lush. Come on. We could, we could do a little bit better. And then there's far post. And you're making the decision whether or not you can cut in and beat and go through this zone and then cross that zone. But as soon as you cross the midfield line, you're basically giving your you're taking away your own space so i don't really cross that midfield line unless i'm making my rotation into second on threes on twos the way that that would manifest is i'm making this tackle i never cross that midfield line basically ever unless i'm just doing a movement where i go here and then i go and tackle like that that's the movement you know that would be how that would that would play out so um I could easily make this into a fucking another professional sky rotation video because there's so much more in depth and I could make this a fucking total ass, total ass one hour video, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But you need to make sure that you are assessing, okay, like my space here, as soon as you push forward, you're only, if your car is right here and you're facing this way, it was, it was right here before it was right here. You're only got, you're only covering that field in front of you. That's it. Or you could just play a little bit slower and cover all of that field. What's better, do you think? Give yourself more time, more space, less anxiety, or less time, more spa less space, and more anxiety and feeling awkward. How about we just not be awkward and instead just play slower? Which is why you got to ignore those videos that tell you you need to play faster. You don't play faster. It's a fucking illusion. Just ignore that shit. If you see those videos... It's likely, uh, if you see those videos, it's likely the result of a really bad coach and do ignore it. Cause I haven't seen any content that's out there. That's actually constructive and useful when it comes to actually knowing how to play faster, because the real idea of how to play faster is how do I cover my space more effectively? And then the speed comes out naturally. It's a byproduct of how to read the situation, but they don't tell you how to read it. They just tell you to play faster and then fucking they do all this weird shit. You know, they don't, they don't teach you the, the roots, the foundation of why things are wrong. And they just fucking give you some bullshit on that. You should have done this in this position rather than telling you the de actual decision making that needs to happen and how to read it, you know? So those are your proponents. If you go, those guys are looking out for coaches, then, you know, and you're not going to do me. That's totally fine. But you need to look out for that when you're doing your thing. Okay. That's the big thing. The main takeaways were just how to recover basically. And he had that weird growing pain you know let's think of it like shin splints it's painful you know so that's the main thing i got for you that's it much love i hope that was helpful peace <clears throat>